Welcome to New Bethel's virtual Sunday school class, where we rightly divide the word of truth, teaching our students to go, grow, connect, serve, and worship by means of evangelism, discipleship, fellowship, ministry, and adoration. Our lesson today is coming to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and it's such a large chapter that we had to section it off in the lesson. So we're dealing with verses 1 through 8, 12 through 14, 20 to 23, and 42 to 45. And our memory verse today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 through 20, and I'm using the King James Version. So let me read it to you. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. You know, this lesson was so amazing to me that Paul had to go back and encourage the people to remember that they have seen and lived what he had talked about because they were questioning if there was a resurrection of the dead. Notice, they lived during the time of Jesus. They saw Jesus heal the sick, the deaf, the lame, raise the dead, turn water to wine, speak to the water, and the waves stood still. And yet they questioned, was there a resurrection? Much like us today, we question if there is a Christ, is there is a resurrected Savior? And it is. It's a shame, but that's the way we are as humans. Sometimes we forget because of the circumstances that we are now facing. But I'm not going to teach the lesson today because I assure you that we do have a resurrection hope. Today, the Sunday School Department has invited a special guest to come in and give an exhortation on the word that we have placed on our blog spot. And it simply said, what does this mean to you? Because he lives. Our lesson objective for today is to elaborate on the attributes of hope and to embrace the call to proclaim the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ despite ridicule or resistance. And today's lesson title is Resurrection Hope. Now, we're not going to deal so much with the lesson title today, but we're going to deal with our Christian education theme for April. And that theme is Because He Lives. Today, I have a special guest. I want to talk to you about our special guest because to me, she is an example of what it means when we say because he lives. And she really, to me, exemplifies the word hope as a young person, hope for all of us. Our guest exhorter today is 10 years old. She's from the Children's Church Ministry. She's multi-talented. She's an advocate for autism awareness. She is the daughter of Minister Erskine and Lady Maude Turner, the sister of Emmanuel Ellis, and Morgan Turner. Oh, I got something even deeper to tell you. Are you ready? She is also the reigning Miss Missouri Junior Preteen and Miss Midwestern States Sweetheart. I said she was 10 years old. I want you to meet today Miss Mariah Turner. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Elder Green, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I just want to open up in prayer, so if you guys could, by your heads and close your eyes. Dear Father, we come to you today on behalf of the New Bethel Church Sunday School, and I ask for forgiveness. I thank you for everything you've done. Would you have your way, God, and let your will be done. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as you know, my name is Mariah Turner, as Miss Elder Green said, um, and I'm 10 years old, as you may know, and I fell in love with pageants um, at the age of seven, but I'll talk to you about that later. I 
was recently baptized a few months ago, and God has been doing a lot of things for me ever since. Um, I just, I'm just here to talk to you about the resurrection story and how Jesus' resurrection helped me. I'm going to start after Jesus has risen and appeared to his disciples. I'm starting off in the scripture, John chapter 20, verse 27, and we're going to read from there all the way to number 30, verse 31. Okay. This is the New Living Translation. Then he said unto Thomas, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord, my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told unto him, You have believe you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs, in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God. And by believing in him, you will have life in the power of his name. Thomas didn't believe what the disciples told him when the disciples told him that Jesus resurrected. He said, I have to see it to believe it. Jesus had to prove to Thomas that I resurrect that he resurrected and that he was the Messiah and the Son of God. God wants you to believe when he says something. When others tell you something about him, you have to believe it and trust in God because he is good. And he will not lead you astray from what you what from the plans that he has for you. What this means for me, that I can be forgiven. Mm-hmm. I'm coming from 1 John verse chapter 9, verse 9. Chapter 1, verse 9. Good. This is the New King James Version. This says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This tells us that if we mess up, We don't have to stay there. It's not the end of the world. All you have to do is say, God, help me to bring me out of my shadowed corner and to help me build a new life, a new path, a new legislation to help me build my way to Christ. But being forgiven also means that I can be saved. I'm coming from Romans chapter 10, verse 9. This is the New King James Version. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that Jesus has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you believe, I'm going back to Thomas. Thomas didn't believe that Jesus rose, but it says here that if you do, you will be saved. If you're a Christian, you want to be saved, I want to be saved, we all want to be saved. So all we got to do is believe that Jesus rose from the dead and he saved you from your sins. So that's our confession, right? That's that's our confession. You got to confess. Wow. But being saved also means you have a relationship with God. From Romans chapter 8, Verse 8, 14 through 15. This is also the New King James Version. It tells us, For as many as we are led, as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. I'm going to tell you how this relates back to me. Good. It's kind of like God is your parents. He's like your father, but at the same time, he's your mother. I know you might think it's kind of weird, but it's true. Um, I'm going to tell you about my parents. They're my support system. 
They're my rock. Without them, I would be nothing. I wouldn't even be here today talking to you. God is just like your support system. He's someone you can talk to. He's someone you can pray to. Tell about your feelings and someone that you can go out and cry about father. But this relationship also gives me hope and a future. Hope. Now, I'm coming from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. The New King James Version. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Thoughts. The thoughts. I'm going to say that again. For the thoughts I know, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you a hope and a future. I'm going to go back to how I said that God is like your mother and your father. Sounds weird. So true. God won't lead you astray. He wants you to go down the right path. Even though you might not like when your parents say, do this, do that. You can't quit this. You're going to do this. They're doing this because they want you to go down the right path. And even though sometimes you think it's your life, they can't live my life for me. They're trying to help you live your life. That's exactly what God's doing for you. He saved you of your sins, but he's also going to lead you in the right direction, the direction that he thinks you should go down. So, you know how I say you have a relationship with God? If God tells you to go this way, and I'm like, no, I'm going this way, kind of like Adam and Eve. God told them not to eat the fruit from the tree, but they did. And that broke their relationship. By not following what God is telling you to do, it breaks the relationship with them. That means you have to do the whole cycle all over again just to have a relationship. How this works for me? As some of you may know, I started doing page competing in pageants when I was seven. Fell in love with it. First time ever, it was the year 2017, three years ago. I'm 10 now, I'm seven. I went into the pageant nervous. I practiced and practiced and practiced, but I was confident and had one goal set in mind. In words, I'm going to win this crown. But I, I didn't get it. You didn't get it on the first try? No. Some people, with my crowns now at 10 years old, people look at it and say, oh, she must have got that because it was so easy. You're wrong. It's actually very hard work. It took me three years. Just like it took God three days. Make it clear, Mariah. To rise again. It took me three years to rise to the top. It took God three days to rise again. So, I'm just here to tell you, second time I won the pageant, went back, did not win it. Second time, it's not the charm. But the third time, before I go on, I was in church with Elder Green here. And a pastor told me, well, told us in the church, that 2019 was the year of accomplishment. Hmm. 2019 came around July. I won the pageant for my category. I was off to nationals in Hollywood, California. It turns out that when you have a relationship with God, you pray to him and you do all the things to create that relationship. And all you have to know is believe in him. He's got your back. I kept going back to compete because I felt deep within myself that I would be queen and I knew God had my back. I had a hope for my future. Just like God said, he would give me a hope in the future. When something doesn't go right, know that God has your back. Keep going back, because God has it. He has your back. Just like me. I knew God had my back. Mm -hmm. And every step of the way, he helped me every step. 
that I took become to rise to the top. So I told them to take care of my body because I will be back. The priest did not want him to come back. They didn't like him because he was taking power away from them. So they put a rock there that nobody could move until an earthquake came. An earthquake came and moved the rock away. When the people went into the tomb, the body was gone. All you could see was a folded napkin. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 20, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, <laughs> declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. And that's what we're trying to tell you today with Miss Mariah being here, that she had a hope and a future, not because she just had a dream and just put it to the side, not because her dad was is a minister or her mom is talented, not because of her She's family like, background, but because God said he had a plan for her. And that plan was to prosper her, to give her a hope and a future. And that's what the rest of the story is about. Yeah? I you know how I said there was a folded napkin in the tomb? Yeah. You know how you go to a restaurant, and when you're done with that napkin, you just put it on a plate? But when you fold it, when you're coming back, you fold it. Jesus had a folded napkin that was covering his face right there where he was, his body was alive. It so meant much. he was He's coming back. Now, a 10-year-old has told you that you can have a future and a hope. And what I loved about it is she applied the word of God. Mariah, would you pray for the people today that are going through this um, pandemic that feel like they don't have a hope? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you to bless them, all those who are covered. And I ask you to cover them with your blood. And I ask you to shelter us from the virus and anything that can come to harm to us. For those who have lost somebody that they love, or those who think that nothing good can come back to them, God, you are that thing that the thing that is good that can happen to them. Bless them and bless their soul. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining the New Bethel Virtual Sunday School. God bless you. We look forward to hearing from you on our blog spot. N B C S S seven four five dot blogspot dot